Good evening, and thank you for joining us tonight for our Village of Alsip board meeting. Today is May 4th, 2020, and we'll call this meeting in order at 7.32. Can you call the roll, please? Yes. Um, first of all, could anybody that is joining via Zoom meeting please turn your volume on your microphones or your phones up however you're joining? Um, Trustee Delzell? Here. Trustee Zielinski? Trustee Zielinski has joined via Zoom. Trustee Juarez? Here. Trustee Juarez has joined via Zoom. Trustee McLawhorn? Here. Trustee Murphy? Here. Trustee Navas Barza? Here. Mayor Ryan? Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Please join us for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we had a, uh, a bid opening to start tonight's meeting. Correct. This is the bid opening for the Pulaski Road and Springfield Avenue water main replacement. Um, we do have a total of five bids that were received. The first one is from Archon, A-R-C-H-O-N, Construction Company Incorporated, 563 South Route 53, Addison, Illinois, 60101. There is a bid bond included, and Commissioner Tribin, did you just want a total dollar amount? The total for this bid is seven hundred twenty thousand dollars, even. That is seven two zero 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 zero. Point zero zero. The second bid received is from H. Linden, L I N D E N, and Sons. Water and Sewer, 722 East South Street, Unit D is in David, Plano, Illinois, 60545. They have included a bid bond. And their total is $775,890 even. So that's 775890.00. Bid number three is from Aries, A I R Y apostrophe S Incorporated, 7455 West Devon Drive, Tinley Park, Illinois, 60477.
they have included a bid bond. Their grand total is $802,527.00. Again, that is 800, I'm sorry, 802527.00. The fourth bid received is from Swallow Construction Corporation, 490 Topsoil Drive, West Chicago, Illinois, 60185. They have included a bid bond. Their total is $708,537.16. So that is 708537.16. And the last bid we received is from Trine, T-R-I-N-E, Construction Corporation, 27W364 North Avenue, West Chicago, Illinois, 60185. They have included a bid bond. And their total is $1,046,885.50. So that is 1046885.50. And that concludes the opening of the bids, Mayor Ryan. Thank you very much. Um, just a couple of notes this evening. I uh, wanted to share with you a notice I got today. Actually, our public work uh, superintendent and our uh, village engineer, uh, Robinson Engineering, is both looking at this right now. I got a notice today from Senator Bill Cunningham just reminding us that he wanted to reach out to let us know that several capital improvement grants programs uh, that your local government may be eligible uh, to apply for, uh, we should do so, uh, even though we are in the midst of an unprecedented situation, we still need to keep roads, bridges, sewers, and other vital infrastructure in good repair and look to the future of our regional ec economies. Uh, all three of these programs are operated under the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity, uh, otherwise known as uh, DCEO. And there's going to be grants available for both public infrastructure. These grants are good for up to $5 million, can be used to repair or replace most forms of publicly owned infrastructure. There's also regional economic development grants. These grants are up to $2 million, can be used for a wide variety of construction related activities that promote regional economic development. And then there's shovel ready sites. These grants of up to $2 million are to support development of sites. With great economic development, economic potential. I'm sorry, that need additional investment to become shovel ready. Uh, again, we've got a list uh, that we can address with this, and Superintendent Mike Freider and Will Dolan are working on that right now. Uh, also on tonight's agenda, I had uh, first on your agenda was the approval to amend the village committee meeting schedule for the summer of 2020 and eliminate the first committee meeting each month starting in May through August, uh, committee's issues can, may still be discussed at the village board meetings. Uh, we discussed that at last week's committee meeting. Um, 
certainly it was just my suggestion as far as the uh, first meeting of the month it could be the last I just thought we'd uh, meet at the last Monday of the month where we can basically surmise what we want to talk about in the, the month following uh, next we've got the um, second on the agenda is the approval of an ordinance of the village of Elsa approving a class 6b assessment status for the real estate located at 11659 through 11701 South Mayfield Avenues. These are pins number 24 dash 20 dash 400 dash 11 and also 24 dash 20 dash 403 dash 001 in the village of Alsip. Uh, again, this was for a, um, a trucking firm that will be addressed uh, later on planning and zoning as well then too. So that's all I had on my agenda for this evening. Uh, we have the clerk's report. Um, thank you, Mayor Ryan. May I go back just to one point um, that you had mentioned about, um, and this is a question for attorney uh, Joe Kankar. If we're going down to one committee meeting um, and something needs to be discussed because we don't, we're kind of in between, to put it on the agenda, for instance, if I needed approval on something, would I first put an item number one that says discussion of blah, 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 and then item number two would be approval of blah, 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 blah? Is that one way of getting? That would be fine. Okay. I just, I just wanted to clarify. Great. Thank you so much, because that way I can communicate to the department heads if there's something that is pressing and can't wait until a month later. Okay. Um, very good. I need to move down to the other desk if... You guys will bear with me for a moment. So it is that time of year again to um, talk about the sale of vehicle stickers. Uh, the mailings did go to the post office last week, um, so they are in route. Um, with the current situation um, going on right now, obviously we have limited um, access to um, coming into Village Hall. However, we are still going to strongly suggest that residents either return the notice by mail um, if they have previously qualified themselves last year for senior or disabled discounts, they can certainly do that. Um, we also have a drop box located in the vestibule for the police department, similar to how we've requested residents to drop their mail for their water bills. We can have them drop the form and the payment there, or we can also go online. And what we've got, um, I don't know if the folks at home, oh, Mayor Ryan, thank you for turning that. I don't know if they can see it very well, but um, on the village landing page up at the top, there is uh, a place where it says you can e-pay water bills or vehicle stickers. Um, and then when you go to the next slide, it'll say make a one-time payment. And then you will simply, where it asks you what type to do, you would select a vehicle sticker. Um, we are doing vehicle stickers online and there is a fee that is associated with it. Um, it's a convenience fee of 2.25%, which is similar to when you pay your water bill online. Um, for example, if you are buying a car sticker at $35, it'll be an additional 79 cents um, as far as the fee is concerned, but because there is a dollar minimum charge, it would be a $36 fee for one vehicle sticker. Again, you can also pay them via the Dropbox or in the mail. For any of the people that are uh, first time discounted stickers, we will be requiring them to come into Village Hall when we open up um, to provide the documentation that is necessary. And depending on when that is, um, we will obviously communicate that to the um, folks. And this year's design um, we have selected is the Park District. Uh, the kind of motto of the Village of Alsip is a great place to live. Last year we did the library, which was also a great place to live and learn. And this year it's, uh, it is a great place to live and play. Um, 
the park district was established in December 5th of 1965. They operate and maintain over 200 acres of land with many recreational amenities within 18 park sites, facilities, and trails. The district is home to the Apollo Recreation Center, Fountain Hills Golf Club, and Safari, I'm sorry, Sprayfari Aquatic Park. The park district owns and operates Fountain Hills Golf Course and the Mary Lynch Skate Park, which is right near the Sprayfari Aquatic Park. And they also added a disco disc golf course last year by Apollo Park. The park district, is, park district is also a proud founding member of the Southwest Special Recreation Association. SWISRA also operates from the Apollo Recreation Center. The park district is also a proud partner of the CalSAG Trail. The regional trail was constructed through federal grant dollars and currently begins in Lamont and will eventually end at Burnham once it's completed. Our park district proudly offers a trailhead at Freedom Park with access to the current trail, which is on Cicero Avenue and approximately 131st, right at the bridge um, over CalSAG. The Alsa Park District also offers a variety of programs and events year-round of all ages. The main district facility is Apollo Recreation Center. This facility was constructed in, constructed in 1971 and later expanded in 1997. The name was chosen because of Apollo's missions, specifically Apollo 13, held in the late 60s and 70s. Um, Apollo Park is located next to Apollo Recreation Center with many residents who grew up in Elsip and chose to raise their families here. The board and staff wanted to bring back the most nostalgic play feature in an updated way. Um, for those of us who are longtime residents like Trustee McLawhorn, <laughs> we remember the old uh, spaceship that was there back in the day. Um, Apollo was renovated in 2018 and captures the space theme with, an acce with accessible play items into the into the design as well as a new kindness rock garden and memorial brick area with seating. This park site also allows access to the walking trail that runs along Costner from 127th to 115th and provides a connection to Sprayfari Aquatic Park. There are plans um, for a future connection to the CalSAG Trail from that walking path. Um, I would like to thank Jeanette Huber, who is the Director of Parks and Rec Recreation, for um, providing us the picture of the new playground that is what is the current sticker, mm -hmm. and also to acknowledge the Board of Commissioners of Kathy Peretta, mm -hmm. Jerry Lynn Kleina, Jackie Becker, Joe Schmidt, and Jairo Gutierrez. Mm -hmm. um, so village stickers mm -hmm. are now on sale. As soon as you get your form in the mail, mail it in, drop it off, go online and get it, and we will mail them back to you. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Are the colors that pretty yes. up close? Yes. <laughs> will they stick? <laughs> yes. All right. Thank you very much. Um, Next, we've got the attorney's report. We have Joe Kankar with us tonight. Joe, any report? I have no report, Your Honor. All right. Next, we have the engineer's report. He was excused from the meeting this evening, but I do have something to share as well. That um, Our engineer, Will Dolan, uh, sent me an email that said, good news. It looks like ALSIP will get six installments over the next three years of approximately $212,000 for capital improvement projects. It is proportionate with uh, our MFT and our motor fuel tax allotment and is uh, deposited into the MFT account, but must be separately accounted for. Money must be identified for uh, an improvement within a year of receiving it, but can be uh, accumulated for one project if used within five years. Uh, total amount is approximately $1.2 million over the next three years. This could be used certainly for the 131st Street project we've been trying to get um, put together. We're, we're a little short on monies, even with the uh, STP grant that we had through the uh, Conference of Mayors. So um, again, there's gonna be a, a handful. I did see a list this evening of uh, all communities in Illinois uh, got a proportionate share of monies based on their um, population. 
every so every village got monies from the state of Illinois, but based on your population too. So that was I forgot the name of the. I can share that with the board. I'll send you the website. Uh, our finance director had that, and he shared it with me earlier this evening. So uh, we appreciate the help from the state uh, to help us with our motor fuel tax, and certainly maybe put down repeat, re replacing more streets. And that's all I have for him. We don't have anybody in the audience this evening, but um, Roger Early's here or Danny Traven. Anybody want to address the board? All right. Nobody for a public forum. Then we'll go to the standing committee reports, uh, finance committee, and, and IT. Trustee McLaughlin. First, I have a request for approval of a list of payroll dated April 24th, 2020, totaling $431,888.51. Next, I have a request for approval of accounts payable dated May 4th, 2020. From the recap, general fund $162,495.80. Road and bridge $20,731.98. MFT $1,121.49. Pulaski Road Corridor TIF $37,683.74. Water and sewer, $618,854.52. And heritage, $13,956.43. For a grand total, all funds of $854,843.96. Next, I have a request from the finance director to hire one full-time temporary summer personnel employee to work 40 hours per week for a maximum of 10 weeks at a cost of $11 per hour. And this, of course, is only if it's fiscally feasible to do so based on possible reduced revenue as a result of COVID-19. And that's all I have. All right, thank you. The Fire Committee, Trustee Murphy. I have approval for the signing of a new IGA with the Illinois Department of Health and Family Services. This is for the uh, ground emergency medical transport. And second, I have approval of the Fire Department March 2020 monthly activity report based on the National Fire Incident Reporting System. And finally, the approval of the Fire Department April 2020 monthly activity report based on the Fire Prevention Bureau. And that's all I have, sir. Okay, thank you. Next is the Police and Traffic Safety, Trustee Dalzell. Uh, nothing requiring board action, but the uh, police chief had forwarded on some updates. This is on May 1st, 2020, the police department began its annual walk and talk foot patrol program. It's the second year of the program that's been in place. Last year, they had uh, hit every block on every residential neighborhood at least once. It's designed to get officers to walk in their beats and at least once a day for 15 to 20 minutes, interact positively with their residents and identify problems that are important to the residents of the community. Uh, the program is in effect May through October and it's weather permitting. Also, they've received uh, tremendous support from the community during this unprecedented time involving the COVID-19. They've received PPE, sanitation, supplies, mm -hmm. meals, et cetera, from big companies all the way down to individuals just looking to help out. They uh, appreciate each and every donation and that they will compile a posting, uh, list, post the full list on their Facebook page in the next few weeks. That's all I have, Mayor. Very good, thank you. Uh, public work and boat launch, Trustee Juarez. Um, I'd like to make a correction on the consent agenda item number G is in George. The dollar amount total for the public works was not picked up there. So G is in George should be approval to hire six public work works temporary full-time summer laborers at $11 per hour each for up to 10 weeks each at a total cost not to exceed $26,400. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Juarez. All right, thanks. Uh, thank you. Next is the sewer and water, Trustee Nava Esparza. No report this evening, Mayor. Thank you. It looks like you've got a, a lot of uh, 
bids to obviously tonight too to look at too with regard to that. I'm really kind of excited to get that work going too because, uh, Danny, how far are we? Hopefully, we're not holding anybody up on that truck um, no, truck wash. Okay. Come up front. Sorry. Yeah, so they're not going to be delayed by the project. We should be able to get them, you know, right about the time that they're doing their construction and making the connection for a water service. We should be, you know, hopefully wrapping up the water main installation. That's great. Thanks, Dan. Yep, but so we'll have a, a recommendation for, you know, you know, contract award, you know, for the next board meeting. And, and when is that construction going to start, like right away? It should start shortly after the award, yes. Okay. So the next board meeting would be the 18th? Okay. All right, next we have the Building and Health Committee reports. Trustee Zelensky. I have an approval uh, to hire three full-time temporary summer personnel for the building department, employees to work 40 hours a week for a maximum of 10 weeks over the summer and four weeks over the winter break to scan documents at $11 per hour. And this is only if it's, fiscal, if it's fiscally feasible due to the possible reduction in revenue as a result of the COVID-19. Second, I have an approval of the Health Department April 2020 monthly activity report. That's all I have tonight. All right, thank you. Next, we have the Human Resource and Insurance Committee, Trustee Murphy. No report tonight, sir. Okay. And the Special Committee reports, uh, Economic Development, Trustee Nava Sparza. Um, I just have updates uh, related to the census. Um, a sales order was uh, submitted to us for census banners that will be purchased with a census grant that I was able to secure uh, through MMC. Um, so hopefully um, it'll take about two to three weeks in order for the banners to come back to us to be put up. So coordinating with public works. Um, also, we were acknowledging the Southland counts uh, for our census participation rate. Um, current participation for self-response is 65.4%. Um, so we still have time to complete the census, and I encourage everyone to, to please do their part and, and do so online, via phone, or if you got a census form, um, to, to submit the census form. And that's all I have this evening. Thank you. Trustee, I'll, I'll let you know, too, um, it's regarding economic development. Just a, um, I was driving over the weekend, Saturday, Went past the and trustees uh, for the benefit for everybody. Uh, went past the new 7-Eleven that's going up. It's coming along pretty good. Uh, the walls are they, they got walls up already, and um, they're moving along pretty well over there and stuff. Then too, actually, uh, last week I was taking a checking on some things around town. Went over to check on the progress over there, and as I pulled in the parking lot uh, behind there, um, State Representative Bob Rito was in the parking lot having a cup of coffee, and we got together, and he, he was watching the construction as well. And uh, it was nice to have a conversation with, you know, it's um, we're blessed to have shovels in the ground with, with developments still happening right now at, at times like these. So uh, we had a nice conversation, and um, again, Coca-Cola's projects move along pretty well too at the same time. So um, I am going to be working on this week, uh, Roger. I, I clipped in. Um, I clipped you on it, and um, Joe Kank, our attorney as well, too. We're going to be working on uh, doing the property acquisitions over on Pulaski uh, to get that ready for the firewater barbecue project, too, as well, then, too. So uh, we've got a small parcel that we have to um, discuss that's right there, and we'll get that. It was part of the redevelopment agreement, so we'll get the second curve. And that's all I've got. Uh, next, Village Properties, uh, Trustee McGlohorn. Mm -hmm. All right, I have a request to hire two full-time temporary summer personnel for the Village Hall, um, another two temporary full-time employees for Heritage One, and finally another two for Heritage Two, all of which will be for 40 hours a week for a maximum of 10 weeks at the rate of $11 per hour, if fiscally feasible due to the possible reduced res revenue as a result of COVID-19. And that's all I have. Thank you. Ordinance legislation, Trustee Zelensky. Uh, there's no report this evening, Mayor. Okay. And planning and zoning and licenses, Trustee Juarez. Mm -hmm. I have an approval of a list of licenses dated April 13, 2020 through April 24, 2020. 
two, we have an approval of an ordinance on the village of Elston granting a special use permit authorizing the repair and storage of trucks and trailers for the property located at 11659 through 11701 South Mayfield Avenue, Elston, Illinois. That's all, Mayor. All right, thank you. Uh, trustees, does anyone have any presentations, petitions, or communications they want to share? Um, I did. Um, I may, I, Mayor. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to give a shout out to Erica O'Donnell, the um, Office Supervisor in Buildings, Clerks, and Water. Um, last year, she um, started saving versions of daily reports uh, into PDFs instead of printing them at the end of the night so that we can post cash edits. Um, we've saved um, over 6,200 sheets of paper since last October. Um, we've also, because we're not having the paper, it's less storage in our office, it's less storage in the garage, it's less money to do records, disposal for shredding, and less time um, for our office staff to either store it or prepare the records for disposal. So I just wanted to thank Erica for her forethought in simplifying records keeping and not killing so many trees <laughs> and saving some room in the garage which Roger likes. So thank you, Mayor Ryan. Thank you. Uh, and I, I did want to thank uh, or, and acknowledge uh, Trustee Murphy. He sent me, uh, Trustee Murphy sent me this this morning. Um, just basically work, uh, the, some uh, basically uh, workplace health and safety guidance for employees and staff of businesses. And just in short, it was just, Many things that we've been told already regarding uh, practicing social distancing, um, maintaining we're six feet apart from each other, uh, still to uh, reduce the spread of uh, virus, uh, not and for businesses as well too. It, it does help. We, we've seen many uh, uh, companies and or stores uh, with the tape on the floor uh, provide now uh, with the new modified ordinance. Uh, businesses have to provide face coverings to their employees. Provide hand washing stations, uh, encourage frequent hand washing, provide hand sanitizer, and regularly clean high touch surfaces. Uh, surfaces, I'm sorry. If you uh, please do not go to work if you're sick. And um, who do you contact if you have any concerns about social distancing in your workplace? Because uh, this comes up all the time on these conference calls that we're on lately, then too. If you have any concerns that your employer is not allowing a safe social distancing or that it is not maintaining a safe and sanitary work environment to minimize the risk of spread of the COVID-19, please contact the Workplace Rights Bureau of the Illinois Attorney General's Office. Also, if you believe that two or more employees at your workplace have COVID-19, please notify your local public health department and there's a list available at the um, Illinois Department of Public Health uh, website. So again, um, and then last is pursuant to um, Section 25B of the Whistleblower Protection Act, businesses are prohibited from retaliating against an employee for dis uh, disclosing information when the employee has reasonable cause to believe that the information discloses a violation of state or federal law, in other words, by reporting somebody that may, um, may be sick. It's, it's for everybody's best interest in health. So, um, Trustee Murphy, thanks for sending that over today, you too. We'll get that posted. Uh, did anyone wish to remove anything from the consent agenda? Then can I get a motion to establish a consent agenda? So moved. Second. Roll call number one to establish the consent agenda as presented. Trustee Dalzell. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Zielinski has voted yes via Zoom meeting. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Trustee Juarez, I'm sorry. <laughs> yes. Trustee Juarez has, has voted yes via Zoom meeting. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Navas Barza. Yes. Motion carries. Motion to approve the consent agenda is presented. Second.
roll call number two to approve the consent agenda as presented. Filling in some information, letter B is in boy, approval of an ordinance of the village of Alsip, approving class 6B assessment status for the real estate located at 11659-11701 South Mayfield Avenue, pins 24-20-400-011. And 24-20-403-001-0000 in the village of Alsip, Cook County, Illinois, will be ordinance number 2020-05-1. Letter C is in Charles, approval of a list of payroll dated April 24, 2020, totaling $431,888.51. Letter D is in David, approval of a list of accounts payable dated May 4th, 2020, totaling $854,843.96. Again, letter G is in George is approval to hire six public works temporary full-time summer laborers at $11 per hour each for up to 10 weeks each at a cost not to exceed $26,400. Letter N is a Nancy approval of an ordinance of the village of Alsip granting a special use permit authorizing the repair and storage of trucks and trailers for the property located at 11659-11701 South Mayfield Avenue, Alsip, Illinois is ordinance number 2020-05-2. Again, this is roll call number two to approve the consent agenda as presented. Trustee Delzell. Yes. Trustee Zielinski. Yes. Trustee Zielinski voted yes via Zoom. Trustee Juarez. Yes. Trustee Zielinski, I'm sorry, Trustee <laughs> Juarez voted yes via Zoom. Trustee McLawhorn. Yes. Trustee Murphy. Yes. Trustee Navis Barza. Yes. Motion carries to approve as presented. Thank you very much. That, did anyone have any unfinished business? How about any new business this evening? It's not um, new business, but um, happy Mother's Day to the, all the moms here on the board. A pre-early Mother's Day because it's <laughs> Sunday you. for the men. You know, <laughs> it's you. on Sunday. And you still have time to shop for, for the special mom in your life. But um, <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Um, and then I just wanted to remind everybody that um, piggybacking on what Trustee Murphy had uh, brought to the attention of the board that um, it is an order to uh, for public safety to wear your masks in public and at work while you're in close proximity to folks. So I appreciate that. I think I get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Very good. Thanks for joining us tonight, folks. Everybody enjoy their evening. We'll adjourn this meeting at 810. And no meeting next week with the new schedule. Correct. Right. I am going to send out a follow-up email. Thanks, Joe. Hey, Joe, I have a quick question. Um, I, I, I had printed this. Yeah, I